Dear friends, today I am going to deal with IPP, that is Ignatian Pedagogical Paradigm. These days we, I am dealing with uh, Ignatian themes or Jesuit educational themes and this talk I am going to talk about teacher-learner relationship uh, in the Ignatian tradition which is called IPP. And IPP, in fact, gives a vision for a triangular relationship between the learner and the subject, which is, we are looking at the truth, in fact, and the teacher. That means, a learner, truth, and teacher relationship. That is a triangular relationship. That's what we are looking at in and through in the IPP. In fact, the teacher's role in the IPP tradition is to facilitate the growing relationship of learner with truth. And therefore, IPP is a teacher-learner relationship. And ultimately, this relationship is aimed at making students to reflect their experiences and based on that reflection of their experiences, take action. Action for what? Action. To take action, you need to be competent. You need to be conscious, developed. You need to have compassion. And you should have commitment. Therefore, Ignatian, the IPP model of education is aiming at making people with the four heart, four C's. That is conscience, competence, compassion, and commitment. In other words, Jesuit education is equally placing head, heart, and skilled-based education hand. We, we call it three H's. So therefore, when we look at IPP, IPP has five steps. The first step is the context. Context gives an experience and this experience must be reflected upon and this reflection must lead student to act and every action must be evaluated. These are the five steps of IPP. Now what is a context? What do we mean by context? Context means the student's life is socio-economic and political, cultural uh, atmosphere, environment, an institutional environment of the school and previously acquired concepts. Uh, what is a student's life? Student's life is affected by its family and also peer group and also the social situation in which the student uh, is coming from. Socio-political and economical aspect we know because the child lives in a particular society and society has its uh, socio-economic and political, cultural aspects. And it has greater influence on the child. For example, if child comes from the poor family or uh, a family which has a particular culture, definitely the child is part and parcel of that because from the birth itself, it is imbibing the spirit of these cultural values. An institutional environment of the school means uh, it has a, a faith community, It has a, it, uh, the child's moral development takes place, the child's religious formation takes place, etc. So, therefore, the environment of the child is very, very important. And finally, the previously acquired concept we call, which is, for example, the cultural environment, which will make, for example, if a child comes from a caste-minded society, the child will have that caste-mindedness. If child is coming from a liberal society, it, was away, it will have a liberal aspect. Its feelings and attitudes are all developed in the kind of what kind of a relationship it has with the other, with the family, with the society, with the peer group, etc. And accordingly, it develops its own value. So that is why context of the child is very, very important. And remember, every context gives an experience. What's an experience? It's a, it is to describe any activity by which 
in addition to a cognitive grasp of matter being considered some sensation of an affective nature. Uh, experience comes only in the context. That's why it is very important. For example, that if based on that experience, the child can ask the question, what is this? How does it work? Why? Etc. Why I am interested in these things? Uh, human experience is so important. In our discussions, in our laboratories, in our investigations, in our field trips, in our exposure programs, visiting to an orphanage, etc. gives child a very, very influential experience. And there are various types of experience. In the classroom, the child gets an experience. A lot of stimulations and assimilation in the playground. The child can get, uh, when it visits to a place or a work in a condition where it gives a lot of um, interest to the child. So the experience can vary. So direct experience is not always possible. Therefore, learning is often achieved through indirect experience. But the classroom, in the school, we must create such an atmosphere so that the child must get a tremendous uh, amount of uh, affective experience and based on these experiences we must uh, uh, allow the child to reflect enable the child to reflect reflection means a thoughtful consideration of some subject matter experience idea and purpose of the spontaneous reaction in order to grasp its significance more fully the purpose by which meaning surfaces in human experience can be called an experience. And in experience also, there are uh, different levels of experience. We can ask a lot of questions based on the experience. For example, if I understand what, what level of my understanding, what is the level of my understanding of truth which I am studying in the classroom? Are they valid? Are they fair? For example, the NEP, the National Education Policy 2020 of Indian government, which talks a lot about critical thinking, innovativeness, creativeness, etc. That all comes here. Uh, by asking relevant questions to the child, actually we need to create curiosity in the minds of the child to ask more questions. Now, what is the source of sensation? of reaction say experience child must be enabled to ask this constantly it must ask does it interest me if i go for a playground to play football does it interest me why that kind of reflection has to happen if i am going to the orphanage and i see that poor people are there the children are there i i, I must ask why i feel this sadness or sympathy or compassion empathy etc that asking question has to be part of our education. It also, for example, uh, it, it also looks at the implication of it. What I've experienced, my feeling. What is the implication of it? Does it affect my life? If it's so, why? That question must come. It also, uh, for example, when I understand this, does it give me a clear understanding about myself? Who am I, for example? Who am I? Why, what moves me? Why? Am I at, a, at peace with that reaction in myself? Why? And when I achieve a personal insight into the events or whatever subject I am uh, learning in the class, does it affect my own lifestyle, my thinking? The things I take for granted, for example. Many things in life we take for granted. For example, air. You know, the first and foremost thing for human beings to live, or any beings to live in on this earth, is oxygen, isn't it, for human beings? Yes, oxygen. And uh, how seriously we take uh, this important aspect in our life, because it is given to us freely everywhere. It is in the air. Therefore, we take it for granted. We are not grateful for these such things because it is freely given to us. So, therefore, make the children to reflect. And it leads to one question will lead to many more questions. And they will find answers. So, 
the challenge for us the for the teachers is in the classroom is to raise relevant questions and create awareness in the students and that's how they develop their viewpoints they develop their their uh, world view that questions must be raised by the teachers okay now action what does action mean action is indignations will say love is shown in deeds not in words in deeds means in action if i love somebody i should so show, show some action not simply words i love you doesn't mean anything if you don't act upon therefore the acid test of love is what one does not what one says you know it is uh, it's not so important that we say so many meaningless words it is a small a little action may touch the hearts of people st ignatius therefore wanted jesuit schools to form young people who could and would contribute intelligently and affective to the welfare of the society that is why later on uh, petro arupa says creating men and women for others is the goal of jesuit education so it, what is ignatian pedagogy when we talk about no i told already p uh, ipp it is actually an affective evaluative stage of learning process we must respect human freedom we must respect the decision and commitment for the greater good that is called matches we call ignatius will say matches we must encourage the matches aspect we must do our best never be satisfied or complacent with what we are doing we can do much better because god has invested in us enough and more power capability talent giftedness and we can achieve it so the word magis is very very ignatian and what is the meaning of magis magis means the better service of god and better service to our fellow beings our brothers and sisters so uh, the ipp is actually aiming at this to make us interiorization of things and react proactively actually not reacting proactively acting so uh, we must have therefore in the process of education jesuit education ipp integral pedagogical paradigm we need to interiorize our choices we must consider the experience from a personal human point of view not simply an intellectual and uh, what you call impersonal way no we need to feel yes this is my experience and that will give the learner uh, how to how to uh, imbibe the truth and how to make it part of his or her life and our choices our choices externally manifested for example i want to do something for others that's why we see our alumni you know huge number of alumni is really imbibed the spirit and whenever there is a need they always have that option to help people that's our education and that's our purpose and this action etc must be evaluated that's the fifth point the fifth step we must uh, be concerned about the students as all round growth as person for others does it happen that's called evaluation must take but since it's important to, to review it's important to evaluate a student's progress in academic achievements uh, it's also important for assessing the fuller human growth take into account of age talents and developmental levels of each student we must monitor their growth and we must make an assessment now the national education policy talks about actually this that's why the entire assessment program has been completely changed 
we need to have not only the examination oriented assessment but the overall assessment of the child is so important and i think this already ignatian uh, principles are already placed before us hundreds of years ago so therefore we need to create an attitude we need to set priorities in our life and based on these priorities our decisions must take place and uh, ipp in fact uh, enable our students to have this kinds of an attitude and make our education better one and uh, that the students should feel that they are part and parcel of the society and integrally uh, integrated society so that the students can contribute when they are in a position for the welfare of the society that is ultimate aim of jesuit education we are not here to create simply uh, intellectual monsters or the self centered people who earn money for themselves and making the best in the world etc the question always ignatian education asks to our students is this that are you giving your best you may not be able to give the best in the world but are you giving your best that is called matches and ultimate aim of this is for the welfare of our fellow beings and i think that is what the society needs today because people are becoming so individualistic more and more self centered suppressing and oppressing and marginalizing and in fact as a, a large chunk of people are neglected in our society it can be various reasons it can be the name of uh, religion caste culture ethnicity uh, geographical uh, areas etc but we want to consider everyone as uh, god's children and we are all interlinked interrelated interdependent that's the purpose of ignatian education and that is why this principle ipp is so important in india we take uh, in our institutions we can take as it has an integral pedagogical paradigm it's it's so important pedagogy if we practice it we create really not human being but help our human beings to become being more human thank you very much and god bless you